Okay, so today I want to go over um, graphing compound ors or ands. So remember for a compound or, it only has to work for at least one of the inequalities. For an and, it must work for both of the inequalities, right? So let's, so there's two different ways you can graph. So I'm going to go over a couple different ways and you can choose which method you like. So the first method is to put the key details. So the key details are we have 2 and negative 3. So make sure you don't put 2 and then negative 3. That doesn't make sense because that's not how a number line works. So you want to make sure that, um, and you don't have to put all the tick marks. Some people like to go 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, you know, negative. Um, that would be to take too much time, right? That would take way too much time. So it's okay just to kind of put the key characteristic prop parts on there. So maybe just put the two and just put the negative three in there. You don't have to put the zero. Otherwise, that takes a lot of time. And so we're okay if you're, if you just, because what if we have 20? You're not going to go all the way out to 20 or, you know, 50. So we're just going to put the key details. So we're going to put negative three and we're going to put positive two. And those are the key characteristics. So we're going to put them on the number line in the right order. And then um, it, notice it breaks it up into three different intervals or sections. So as you can see, we've got three different what we call intervals. We've got numbers to the left of negative 3. We've got numbers in between negative 3 and 2. And we have numbers to the right of 2. And so it for an or, for a compound or, it is said to be a solution if it makes at least one of the inequalities true. So one method is to test. So like pick a number in the red section, like maybe negative four. So if I pick negative four and I test it and I go is negative four greater than positive two. No, that's false. So it doesn't work for the first one. Is negative four smaller or less than negative three? That's a true statement. So that means these numbers are solutions. So anything in the red section is a solution. So we're going to shade it and we should shade the arrow. Now let's test a number in the green zone or the interval that's between negative three and two. So pick any number that's in between there. Like uh, let's pick zero, pick any number you want. So I'm gonna erase this. So it has to make at least one of them true. So is zero bigger than two? No, that's false. Is zero less than a negative three? No, that's false. So the green zone did not, it did not make any of them true. So these are not solutions, right? To be a solution, it has to make at least one of them true. Let's look at the interval that is to the right of 2, right, in the blue zone. Let's pick a number to the right of 2, like, um, I don't know, let's pick the number 3. Is 3 greater than 2? True. Is 3 less than negative 3? False. It didn't work for the second one, but it did make the first one true. So these are also solutions, right? And then there is no... Um, this should be an open circle and an open circle. And the reason why those are open circles is because if you look at the number 2, right, if you look at the number 2, so I have to do a lot of erasing here, let's test the number 2. So let's check 2. So if we put 2 in, is 2 bigger than 2? Nope. Is 2 smaller than negative 3? No. 2 does not work for any of them, so 2 is not shaded because it's not a solution, right? So remember when you have, I um, wish I could figure out how to erase this faster, yikes, right? So remember, if there was an equal to symbol underneath here, that means it would have been a solid shaded circle because if it was equal to, 2 is not greater than, but 2 would be equal to, that would have made a true sentence. So that would have been an actual shaded, because shading are your solutions, things that make the sentence true. So this would be an open circle. So that's one way. So one way is to break it up into intervals, 
right? So put your negative three and your two and test each section and see if it makes one of the sentences true. I don't know about you, but that's not my favorite method. My dog's over here getting into stuff. That's not my favorite method because it seems time consuming. So the easier method is just to think logically. Where are all the numbers that would make this sentence true? Where would they be? Where are all the numbers that would make that true? That would be all the numbers that are bigger than two. So that would be all these numbers, right? And then where are all the numbers that would make this sentence true? Wouldn't that be all the numbers less than negative three? And again, it's an open circle because there's no equal to symbol underneath it. And that would be over here. Isn't that much faster, right? That's much faster. And normally we ask you to do it in black, right? That's fine. But don't go like this. Don't go over here and over there. Don't use the arrow technique. Like actually do the shading, right? So don't do that, please. Actually do the shading. Let's look, Let's at, look at number, number two. two. So number two. Again, you could do, uh, we've got negative three and zero, so negative three should go here, and zero should go over here, and you notice it broke it up into intervals, so we could do all the numbers that are to the left of three and test, and then we could do all the numbers in between, and then we could do all the numbers to the right, so we could test numbers, but I think we both agree to pick numbers like, you know, pick like, negative four because that's a negative and test it and throw in negative four is negative four less than or equal to negative three that's true right so those would be solutions but i think we both agree like breaking it up into intervals and testing and then pick a point and test it and pick a point and test it seems like it's a lot of extra work so i think we all agree we like the second method so the second method is what we like better right so we have negative three and zero are our key numbers. And we want all the numbers, all the numbers that would make this sentence true. So remember, you have to read it backwards. So we want all the numbers that would be less than or equal to negative three. And because it has an equal to symbol, that would be a solid. And all the numbers less than or equal to negative three would be here. So these are all the numbers that would make this sentence true. And then what are all the numbers that would make this sentence true? That would be an open circle. Anything greater than zero would make that sentence true. Number three. So I think we all agree the second one makes more sense. We've got four and we have eight. So where are all the numbers that would make this sentence true? Right? Where are all the numbers that would make this sentence true? All the numbers that are greater than four. So all the numbers that are greater than four would make this sentence true forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. And then where are all the numbers that would make this sentence true? So wouldn't that be all the numbers less than? So basically, haven't we shaded the entire number line? So since we shaded the entire number line, our final answer should be all real numbers. And that should be your final answer because you shaded the entire number line. Okay, number four, n is great. So remember these are or, so as long as it works for at least one of them. So we've got one and six, be careful, don't say six and one, that's not how a number line works. So we need to make sure that we're putting our numbers according to a number line. Wouldn't one come first and then six? So let's make sure we're being cautious. Where are all the numbers that would make this sentence true? And this time I'm gonna put it in black, right? All the numbers that are greater than six would be this way and then where are all the numbers that would make this sentence true actually maybe i will do this one in color i'll do that one in color all the numbers that are greater than negative six would make the red one true and then all the numbers that are greater than one forever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever so what did we end up shading so what do you notice it's shading so technically we should rewrite our answer as don't you see all the numbers that are greater than one are shaded? So this should be our adjusted answer, right? Because we see everything greater than one being shaded. So we should technically adjust our algebraic answer. Okay, now let's look at ands. 
So an and, remember, it has to work for both. So let's go back to that technique of breaking it up into intervals. Now remember, negative 2 and negative 6 is not appropriate. That's not how a number line works. So you've got to make sure that you're putting your numbers correctly. So for an example, wouldn't 0 be over here and then negative 2 and then negative 6? And we don't have to put 0 in there. We could keep it in there if we want to. But you don't have to. You can just put the key characteristics in your number line. And so notice again, we're going to go back to the first method. And we're going to go back and say, when you put those numbers in, doesn't it create three sections or breaks it up into three pieces? We call those intervals. So notice that we have the numbers that are to the left of negative 6. We have the numbers that are in between negative 6 and negative 2. And we have the numbers that are to the right of negative 2. So this is the first method where we pick a number in the zone, right? So we're going to pick a number in the red zone, say like negative 7, and we're going to test it. Is negative 7 smaller than negative 2? True. Is negative 7 bigger than negative 6? False. So the red zone are not solutions because to be an and, it has to work for both. And it did not make both true. So any number in the red zone is not a solution because it didn't work for both. Let's try the blue interval. So let's pick, um, I guess, negative 3. So let's... <clears throat> So remember, it has to make both of them true. So is negative 3 smaller than negative 2? True. Is negative 3 bigger than negative 6? True. So since it made both of them true, that means that the solutions are in between negative 2 and 6. The solutions are in, the, in between negative 2 and 6, the blue interval. And notice there is no equal to symbols here, so this would be an open circle and an open circle because there's no equal to symbols. Now let's check the green zone or the interval that is to the right of negative 2. So like, let's pick 0 and let's test 0. So if we put 0 in... Is 0 less than a negative number? No, 0 is never less than a negative number. Is 0 bigger than a negative number? Yes, that's true. Did 0 make both of them true? No, it did not make both of them true. So these are not solutions. So my only solutions are between negative 6 and negative 2. But I think we'd all agree that that method of testing each interval is very time consuming. So I think we'd all agree that that's not our favorite way of doing these problems. So then how would we do the ands? So let's go and do the other method. So let's take the same problem, and we've got negative 6, remember, and negative 2, put them in the same direction. What makes all of these true? So all the numbers that are less than negative 2 would be an open circle, would make all of these forever and ever and ever would make the red, the first sentence, true. And let's do all the numbers that would make the second sentence true would be all the numbers that are greater than forever and ever and ever. Well, we want the numbers that are true for both. So the numbers that are both red and green. So what numbers are red and green? So I, what's great is I have an eraser, so I can erase and say only these numbers are red and green, right? And so if you're using color, then you would darken that in and emphasize that it's between, right? And it would have to be an open circle. So we need to clean this up a little bit and make it a little bit better. So because there's no equal to symbol, there should be an open circle there. So it's just the numbers between negative 6 and negative, negative 6 and negative 2. So normally, if you're, you don't, if you're using pencil, you can erase, but you can't really tell. So if you're using color, you can't erase. So it's hard to see what you're saying is your final answer. So we need to be clear what your final answer is. So a lot of times we'll do this method so that... 
we because right if you're using color i was able to erase and just put where they were shaded the final solutions so a lot of times as teachers we'll say okay so for the ands let's maybe start off doing it above so we're going to say all the numbers that will make the first sentence true are from here forever and ever and ever and ever and ever and then all the numbers that would make n is greater than negative six true would be from here forever and ever and ever and ever and then we can see where are they true for both is right here so then we can say in between right so this is our final answer so it needs to be very clear what your final answer is so that's the reason why we um, do it above to see where they overlap. So either way, it just needs to be clear where your final answer is. So let's try number six. So we've got negative one and four, and I'm gonna make it, you know, a big gap between them. So we want all the numbers that are greater than, because remember this is written backwards. So all the numbers that are greater than negative one would be from here forever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever. And then where are all the numbers that are greater than four? Wouldn't that be from here forever and ever and ever and ever and ever? So where, what are the ones that work for both? Remember, and it has to be true for both. So remember, anything in red is true for the first one and anything in blue is true for the last one. So aren't these both red and blue? So aren't these true for both of them? So when you're graphing, we don't want to see the other part. Like you, you have to erase. It has to be very clear what your final answer is. So this needs to be erased and only that should be your final answer. And so again, when you're using, when you're using color, it's hard to see that. So that's the reason why we say when you're graphing to ands to do it above so that it can clearly be where your answer is. Or maybe you do it on a piece of scratch paper. So what you could do is do what I just did on a piece of scratch paper off to the side, and you've got your negative one and four, and then you can finalize your answer. So that would be your final answer, right? Or you can say and do it above, all the numbers that are greater than negative one would be from here for on forever and ever. And all the numbers that are greater than four are here from ever and ever. And don't they overlap after four? So this is your final answer. So we want your final answer to be extremely clear. So if you're using color and you can't erase, maybe do it off to the side on a piece of scratch paper, then you can write your final answer. Number seven is another and. So we're looking for numbers for both. So remember, zero goes first and then three. So if we're going to do all the numbers that are greater than three, it would be from here forever and ever and ever and ever. And all the numbers that are less than zero that would make this true, right? And so there aren't any numbers that are both blue and red at the same time. There aren't any numbers that are both blue and red. There's no overlapping. So your final answer should be no solution. And you shouldn't have anything shaded because remember the shading represents the solutions. So you shouldn't have anything shaded. So your final answer would be zero and three, a number line with no shading and your final answer would be no solution. All right, let's do that again. So all the numbers that are greater than three are from here forever and ever and ever. And all the numbers that are less than zero are from here forever and ever and ever. And they're, they don't overlap. Like, remember on this problem over here, the red and green overlapped after 4. So that's the reason why the solution was after 4. There's no overlap, so the answer is no solution. And then number 8 is called a between statement. And you can read this and separate this. So this is just a fancy way of writing an and. So notice that you have all numbers greater than 0. So all numbers... all numbers that are greater than zero and, right? So this is an implied and, and all numbers that are less than four or equal to four. So remember, this is just a fancy way of writing this. This is a between statement. I call that a between statement. 
you can read all this reads all the numbers that are between 0 and 4. So all the numbers that are between 0 and 4 open circle and because there's an equal to symbol underneath there that would be a shaded circle and all the numbers between 0 and 4. We could test it. Let's pick a number between 0 and 4 like the number 2 and test it. Is 2 greater than 0? Yes. Is 2 less than or equal to 4? Yes. So doesn't the numbers in between 0 and 4 make both of these sentences true? So see, these really are the solutions. Between statements are the easiest ones to do. Okay, so those are your ands and your ors. Okay, so what you could do is you could pause this tape and rewind it. And before, right, you could, before I do one, you could pause it and then try it and see how you do. So you get to number two, you could pause the tape and then you could say, I'm going to try this one and see if I get what she's got. So that's how you could go back and double check your work and use a video tutorial to help you understand. So don't just watch the video, but maybe pause it and say, I'm going to try it and then see what happened. Then go to the next one, pause it at number two, and then try it yourself. And then fast forward and see what I got. And then pause and then do and then fast forward. That's how you learn with a video tutorial. I hope this helped.